Teresa. <laughs> <laughs> I heard it. I heard it. Teresa. I love him. Yo, I'm Luke Cage. I ain't no joke. You can't burn me. You can't blast me. And you definitely can't break me. I ain't no joke. 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 Before we start talking about Luke Cage, I have to talk something, or I have to ask you something totally different, Lucy. Yesterday you gave me a no for Charlie's Angels 3. <laughs> and uh, today I have, to, I have to ask again. What if I could pitch uh, an idea to Drew Barrymore as well, who's working for Netflix now? Um, eight episodes, for example, you... Uh, eight handing, episodes on Netflix? Yeah, handing over the Charlie's Angels staff to a new generation. Would that still be a no for you? <laughs> <laughs> I think they'll just take over. The girls don't need anyone handing anything over. But I would love to see you in that role. That's again. so kind of you. Yeah. We'll do something... Cheo and I will do something else. Oh, we'll take some ass. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. So, Luke Cage, since, or between Luke Cage season one and two, mm -hmm. there was a very important movie, uh, Ryan Coogler's Black Panther. Mm -hmm. Has anything changed in your storytelling, or have you changed your approach towards the second season of Luke Cage after seeing the movie or while working on the second season? No, because we were finished um, before, like when we finished, Black Panther was already in post. And even though, you know, of course, like, I'm a huge fan of Ryan and we know each other a little bit. And, you know, some of the Black Panther actors I've known for years, um, you know, Sterling K. Brown and I um, were at Stanford at the same time. He's a couple years behind me, you know, and Joe Robert Cole, who co-wrote um, Black Panther, is also someone who I know, you know, really well. It's like we're all cheering for each other, but we mm. don't talk about, you know, the plans, the, the, the plans yeah. I mean, because, you know, they're already wrapped in secrecy with what they were, they were filming in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. You know, we're in, in New York under the, the cloak of darkness. Yeah, I couldn't <laughs> even get my own dailies. Yeah. <laughs> it was so hard. Oh, really? It's just everything is very um, high security. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, luckily I'd seen the dailies because I shot them, but, yeah. you know, it's hard to, like, actually even access your own information, let alone have a discussion. And in, meanwhile, he's writing and producing and on the set, so... I mean, I think it's exciting that there that there's so much um, feedback for both Luke Cage and yeah. Black Panther. It only shows the the next era of, of you know really understanding and openness. And also, like we open doors for each other. So, for example, yeah. like when I talked at, at San Diego Comic Con about the Wu Tang vacation of the Marvel Universe, that was talking about bringing Wu Tang attitude and music to Marvel. And it's really combining both the hip hop audience and the Marvel audience, which have always kind of been mm -hmm. very similar because of all the hip comic book references in hip hop, and putting it together and giving it that verb and that punch. Us being able to do that, I think, um, helped um, Ryan from the standpoint of he didn't have to have the arguments as to yeah. why. Why do you want to, you know, set this part in Oakland and use too short, you know, or you know, have a public enemy poster because if we have a biggie poster, the world didn't end. And so, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, it's the same thing now on a much bigger scale. The thing is, is that we had a certain level of success um, in terms of being the show that broke Netflix and Black Panther is the movie that broke the world. Yeah. So. And I mean, it's still the same universe, right? So it's basically the show is set in the same universe as Black Panther. So they're kind of also helping each other in a way, story, story wise. Well, I mean, and then also just as as black filmmakers, like we, yeah. we we got each other's back, you know. And so that's the thing is that like, um, I was just as a fan as well as a filmmaker, just so excited about the success that that movie has has had, and that and is the doors that it's opened. And you know, it's at the same time, it's like um, you know, both Ryan and everybody that I know from that, they've been so supportive of Blue Cage. You know, it's just really just uh, like I'm just so proud of that movie, and I think you know the the success of that movie ultimately helps us. Yeah. The, the next question is basically for both of you, and it's it's a little bit controversial because I always have the feeling that I'm the only one with this opinion. Um, there's been some criticism about uh, Iron Fist, the way the story was handled. Don't you think that it's some kind of risk to take that character and also combine him with Luke Cage, which was brilliant in my opinion? Isn't there sort of a risk? to destroy that great storytelling that you had in the first season by introducing Danny Rand, who wasn't that well received. N not at all. I no? mean, because the thing is, is that like, you know, it's, you, you can't be dissuaded um, 
from bringing together characters that you know had great chemistry in terms of the comic books and also got along well in the defenders um, I think the way that we use Iron Fist with Luke Cage you know yeah people are gonna be like oh well, that's not gonna work but mm -hmm. they haven't seen episode 10 yet and they haven't seen the fight that we have them in episode 10 it, actually I think you, you, you have it in your queue I don't, I don't know if you've seen it yet I haven't seen it. Oh, see, so, <laughs> see, that's the thing. Thank you for the spoiler, but because, I mean, like, actually, if you've seen it, yeah, I like. I'm telling you, like, um, there's this moment with them. You know, I'll, I'll spoil a little bit. I mean, it's it's a moment with Luke and Danny Rand fighting alongside each other with this specific Wu Tang song. Mm -hmm. Like, it's oh man, it's it's, it's, it's electric. Awesome. I feel like, you know, people are gonna actually, I think, look at Iron Fist differently when you see how he interacts with Luke on yeah, the show. Yeah. The last thing that I would ask is something that I usually never get an answer for, but I have to try. If you had the chance to introduce that character to the Marvel Cinematic Universe or vice versa, use some character from the Marvel Cinematic Universe, would you do it in your show? I would love for Luke and um, T'Challa to run into each other. Mm -hmm. Like e either, you know, King, you know, either King T'Challa is is uh, in Harlem and happens to go to Parf Barbershop because he, you know, he needs to edge up his fade or, <laughs> or, awesome, you know, or, or, or something else happens, I mean, because um, the, the, the Reggie, the, the, the Reggie Hudlin run of the comic book mm -hmm. um, had all these great Luke Cage Black Panther stories. And they have such great chemistry, you know, both in, in that version and also, and also the, the, some of the Christopher Priest stories as well. It's like, I, I just think it would just be cool to just to see yeah. them hang out. I think it needs to happen. Thank you very much for having Thank me. You. Thank you. Thank you. Don't let it.